What's going on guys? Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a soft tackle. This is going to be a blue winged olive soft tackle. Um, I fished this a lot last year actually. Um, as a lot of you know, I don't really fish dries. Um, most of my fishing is either soft tackles, swinging soft tackles, or I do a lot of nymphing. Um, my buddy, all he fishes is uh, dry flies, and uh, 9 times out of 10 when he's uh, fishing dry flies and I'm swinging um, whatever hatch is going on, on like a blue winged olive hatch, um, I'll fish him 9 times out of 10. So this is a good pattern. Um, if you see that there's a hatch going on and the fish aren't really coming up to key in on those dry flies, this is an awesome pattern to, uh, to fish because there's not any weight, so it's still under the water. It's about subsurface. So it's really high in that water column, and I just find that the fish uh, keen in a lot more than the dries. So the hook we have in the vise right now is a Daiichi 1120 curved hook. This is in a size 10. Um, I like to tie these all the way down to a size 14, and I tie most of my soft tackles on these curved hooks um, just because I like how big the, uh, the hook gap is, and I just like how they, they look when they're swinging through the water. The thread we're gonna be using is UTC Semi Denier in olive. And we're just going to start our thread about a eye's length behind the back of the eye. We're just going to take some thread wraps here, cut out a little tag end. And we're just going to take some thread wraps down to about the barb. The first thing we're going to be tying in is our tailing section. And I'm just going to be using some hackle here. This is in a dun color. And I like the uh, the hackle near the top where they have these bigger kind of um, stiffer fibers. And we're just going to grab about six to eight fibers here. And on my soft tackles, I like to keep the the tails a little bit shorter, just so they um, go through the water a little bit easier without any thing to hang up on. So as you can see there, the tail is about the size of the hook gap. So I'm just gonna tie that in and I'm gonna come back and put one wrap underneath that tail there. And as you can see, all it does is kind of keeps it propped up a little bit. Next we're going to be tying in our rib and for a rib we're going to be using a soft wire. Um, this is equivalent to like a uh, UTC ultra wire. This is in a size small and the color is gold. So I'm just going to get a little four inch piece, four to six, six inches. You tie a bunch of flies with that and I'm going to tie that wire on the side of the hook facing towards me. And we're just going to tie that down to almost the end of the body there. What I like to do is take one wrap of dubbing behind that just so that the wire doesn't really mess with the tail too much. So we're going to dub our body now and for the dubbing we're going to be using some rabbit and this is just in a blue winged olive color and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, dub a pretty tight slender tapered body here and the reason for that is just so it can swing through the water without getting hung up on a bunch of materials so I'm just going to dub a nice little starting noodle here I'm just going to take one two behind that wire. Now I'm just going to build a nice little tapered body going up to about a beat or a eye's length and a half behind the back of the eye. And that's where we're going to be tying in our wing and our hackle.
So I'm just dumbing a little tapered body here. One more pin should do. And I like to put this stuff on in small portions. And I like to put it on relatively tight around the thread so it's not um, kind of squishy, if you will. So now we're just gonna grab our wire. Just make some nice, open spiral wraps up the body here. Tie that off nice and tight. Just like so. I'm just gonna helicopter that out. Now the next material we'll be tying in is some CDC. This is in a dark dun color, but you can just tie it in a regular dun if you have that. If you don't have a clip for a CDC, you can just tie in just the feather. And that's what I'm gonna do on this particular fly. So I'm gonna find a fiber that, or a feather that has some relatively shorter fibers down the side. So I'm just going to strip some of these off the bottom like so. Now I'm just going to pull this back a bit. So I have a little triangle there. What I'm actually going to do is cut this triangle so it's a smaller triangle and that's what I'm going to use to tie in so it doesn't slide out anywhere. So I'm just going to tie that in, and I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here, grab that stem, we're just going to make a couple wraps here, and it's okay if, you're, if, you're, um, if your CDC is a little too long, because you can just, once it's in, you can just kind of use your nail and um, make it to your desired length. So I'm just going to put a couple wraps in here. So I get that stem out. It's like so. Now we can come in and just cut that stem out. Now we can actually just pull back on any of the fibers that went forward. Now you can just grab your nail and just kind of trim these up to the length that you want. I kind of personally like it when there's a couple straggly ones. But as far as the length goes, I like to keep it around the uh, back of the body tail area. You don't want to go too much past that so the last material we've been tying in is our hackle part. I'm going to be using some Hungarian partridge. And I want to find a feather that is kind of white to match with the rest of the fly. So you can get like feathers like this. It's kind of like brown. But I'm going to stick with one like this where it's white just so it mimics the fly a little bit nicer. I'm just gonna strip these fibers off the stem. So you're left with just the stem and your hackle part. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do is actually try to grab the middle and pull back these fibers just like so. Just like that. Then what I'm going to do is cut this little section into a smaller triangle just like that. And that's what we're going to use to tie in so it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to put a couple nice wraps in there. 
Then grab your hackle pliers. Just pull back a little bit on these fibers just so they're pointing rearward so it's a little bit easier to turn in the hackle. My hackle pliers can stay on here. Just like so. So I'll put this whole feather in. It's not much, but two nice wraps. And you can let go of your hackle pliers. I'm just going to finish putting that in. Now you can cut out your stem. Nice and close. I'm just going to pull back on all of these fibers and just build up a nice little head here. Then grab your whip finish tool, throw in a four or five turn whip finish to finish it off. Make sure that that knot's nice and tight in there. You can cut out your thread, just like so. Got a little hanger there, just cut that off. Now what I like to do is just put a little, little dab of Loon Outdoors clear fly finish on here. This isn't a thin. I just put a little dab right on top. Then I'll just grab my bodkin here, just move that down on the thread wraps. What this is going to do is just going to protect those thread wraps so nothing can rip it apart. Then I'm just going to hit that with my light here for about 15-20 seconds. Then your fly is ready to fish. So if you guys never really fished soft hackles, I definitely recommend it. I love fishing them so much. Um, but yeah, there's your nice little blue winged olive soft hackle. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, drop a comment if you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials that I used. Thanks a lot again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.